Let's talk about Peter Muskett's yard because it's been said on, on numerous occasions. Um, it's a tough man, the, the, the right word. He's, he's a tough taskmaster. He wants it done properly. He likes things to run like clockwork. He has his way about doing things, which is the right way. You know, you get it done early, you get it done the right way. You know, you don't dot the I's and cross the T's. Well, you might think that uh, we're going off our heads or we're a little mad. You'd probably be right. But we have had Mark Naidu on our podcast before and we're having him back again because my oh my, he's just been on an international trip that we all want to hear about. But before we greet and welcome Mark again, uh, let's uh, greet Grumps from the top of the hill who's come down from Ashburton. How are you? Hot. Hot, what? Yes, yeah, uh, 38 this morning. It's warm, it's warm, it's warm, it's warm, but it's summer and uh, we're going to certainly sweat. It's going to be a bad one. But we say it every year, it's going to be a bad one, but it does get worse. It's going to be a wet weekend. I, I believe they're expecting a, bit, a lot of yeah. rain about. Mm. How are you though? Are the rows all right? No, yes. Good, good. Fantastic. And you? Uh, yeah, no, all good. No Need complaint. glasses? Glasses, can you believe it? Glasses. Uh, uh, That's why you talk such rubbish. You can't see straight. I don't, talk with, my, yeah, I don't yeah. talk with my, it might help with my tipping. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, your glasses are needed. Uh, I'm as blind as a bat. And uh, that orange shirt you're wearing is fantastic. It gives me great pleasure to welcome back to the podcast Mark Naidu. He's here and uh, for the second time. And it's always a pleasure to chat with him. How are you, Mark? Very well, thanks yourselves. Good, yeah, no complaints. Thank you. There was something I wanted to talk to you about before we get on to uh, Mark's conversation. You were saying... Well, you um, made notes. Yeah, no, I've made the notes that we were talking about. forgotten early in the podcast. <laughs> Oh yes, I was going to say to you, have you written any good articles? Because I sent an, uh, an email somewhere, there was a debate, uh, but forget what the debate was, but I sent an email somebody to somebody and I said that I'd run this work through you and you'd given it the all clear and you were a world class journalist. Do you agree with that comment? No. You know, I do, you're a world class journalist, but the question, uh, what I'm trying to get at is uh, some good articles, you've been busy keeping work, although you've semi-retired, you've turned out some good work as always. No, I have to, you've got to keep going. Keep keep going. going. I, I, like, I love it. Absolutely. No. But uh, semi-retired, uh, I just want to say semi-retired, but you're still working, you've still got graft to do. Nothing's changed, except <laughs> the salary. <yeah. laughs> okay, Andrew Harrison, a great journalist, we're so lucky to have good journalists in this country, he's not the only one, there are plenty of them. Mark? Just a, a quick refresh course for the guys and girls that are watching. you assistant trainer to the musket stable, but just give us a quick microwave version, as I call it, of you know, how you got involved in the industry and, and how it all started for you. Um, I've been going to the races ever since I was a little kid. My dad, you know, been sure that we went uh, every July that we could. Uh, the passion was there from, from way back then. And when I graduated school, I just wasn't sure you know what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to be involved in horse racing. I just didn't know how to get in. Um, and a couple of years passed, I found out there's a school at Samuel Stud. Joined them. Uh, did really well at the courses they had on there. I fortunately, bumped into Brett at a stallion day. We got to chatting. I told him I want to be involved in racing. He said, "Come spend some time at my yard." Uh, Pete was running his KZN string during the winter season, and uh, that's that's how it started. No, it's a pity that that some of your things closed down, eh? Has it closed down? Uh, I've oh, well, read somewhere that it has closed down. I haven't heard any updates yeah, uh, recently any regarding updates. the school, but uh, to my knowledge, it's still, it running. still running. Oh, yeah, okay. and yeah. I think you well, know. So. In, in fact, they may have added more um, more areas to the course where they're dealing with things such as artificial insemination and uh, and different disciplines um, yeah, well, sport horses not sport horses yeah, yeah, yeah. not, not yeah, just no, thoroughbreds not thoroughbreds yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> i suppose yeah because the new owner mr henning pretorius who's not only involved in thoroughbreds he's also involved in warm bloods you're quite right i mean then that makes sense yeah. you know that he would have added a few more uh, disciplines and a few more things to the school okay i'm, I'm sure they'd be uh, they'd be quite chuffed to, to talk about the school and you yes. know get get the word out there absolutely we must maybe look at getting we'll find out who's running it now. yeah absolutely right. i'll make a note of it shall i yeah bro. okay don't forget i'm making go see note. my trophy when you're there okay, okay. Well, your trophy <laughs> what best student uh yeah top 
Shot. Well done. Fantastic. Fantastic. 2016. Well, he works for the Peter Musket stable. They wouldn't accept any mediocrity. Yeah. So <laughs> if he's there, you've got to know he's good. Let's talk about Peter Musket's yard because it's been said on, on numerous occasions. Um, he's a tough man, the, the, the right word. He's, he's a tough taskmaster. He wants it done properly. He likes things to run like clockwork. He has his way about doing things, which is the right way. You know, you get it done early, you get it done the right way. You know, you don't dot the I's and cross the T's. Sure. You know? Yeah, and well, he had a hard taskmaster in the beginning. He, he trained for, uh, he was assistant to David, David Payne. Payne. And, yeah. okay. and Payne didn't suffer fools gladly, I promise you. Yeah, well, he was from your, I say it with respect, he was from your era, David Payne. I mean, yeah, you would know more than both of us. I knew David quite well, yeah. So, he didn't take any nonsense? No. Nothing? It was his way or, or out. <laughs> Before my time, so <laughs> yeah, I, can't, absolutely. I, I can't touch on that. Yeah, well, uh, my, gra- my, gra- my late grandfather, I mean, I've got, uh, I've treasured them so much. I've got two beautiful paintings at home. Paintings, because they used to paint yeah. those, you know, the... the uh, of David Payne's horses that he trained for my grandfather, and I treasure those 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 images at home. Well, my my favourite story of David Payne is he used to train for Graham Beck. He was he was like the Bill Ewans of today, and uh, Beck imported this. It was a cult at the time, and uh, we had a press public journalist public day in, at the Payne stables, and Beck was saying, oh, "This is my new stallion," you know, and you know, all <laughs> David says. Rocky, I hope he didn't look underneath. He said he's really gilded it. Goodness <laughs> <laughs> gracious me! Uh, can you imagine how that went down? No, he didn't care. If the horses needed gelding, he gilded it. He didn't, he didn't ask the owner. Sure. Okay. So, the, but yeah, David Payne. Yeah, so a hard taskmaster. Um, so yeah, it, it's 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 a yard where everybody knows where they stand. You know your responsibility. You know how it must get done, and it just runs. Yeah, everybody, you know, again, going back to to the worksheets, Pete has everything, you know, planned well in advance. So when we get there, you know, everything's already teed up. Have a look at the worksheet, the vet work, whatever we need to get done for the day. Obviously, you know, we know which horses have issues in that and which horses to, to keep a little bit more focus on because they're prone to certain things. Uh, but yeah, Pete's on top of everything. He is the most meticulous person I've met. I want you to explain to me because you know again we often say a lot of people behind the scenes don't realize what work goes into getting to a horse to a certain point and the one day I came to the yard I went to the yard to do interviews and there was a horse on the treadmill (laughs) and I did not realize you know who the horse was what issues the horse had had and it's just the point I'm Mark laughs because I'm bringing it up because Pete got a little agitated that I'd stood in the wrong place at the wrong time. But the point I want to make is that every horse is a different individual and has their issues. And that particular horse, wow, you had it was such a job to get it to that point. And you can't let anything interfere with it. That's the point I'm making. Yeah, so I think, you know, with horses, you always got to remember they're flight animals. Their only defense is to run away from something that scares them. Sure. So, you know, she's on a treadmill or they're in a box, they're in a confined space, they get spooked or scared, or you approach them from the wrong way. They've got nowhere to go, you know. So that's something that I think, you know, people who aren't working in the industry, they're not particularly going to know that. Sure. You know, it's it comes down to, to horse psychology, you know, and, and understanding sure. their behavior. So so with that particular horse or any horse on the treadmill, you don't want to approach from the front opening of where our particular treadmill is because they're just going to see something that's popping up in front of them while they're working and they've got nowhere to go. Sure. So, you know, always approach, yeah. approach from there. Yeah, it's funny. Each horse has got, individual horse has got its own character because I was talking to Gary yesterday or the day before, about White Cedar. Uh, he said they were cleaning the, the, the boxes and uh, cleaning them out and spraying the roof and all that sort of thing. So he moved him to another box and he just went berserk. He didn't like that box. He wasn't in his home. Yeah, he wasn't in his home. So they, they chucked him out into the paddock where he normally goes and he was fine. Yeah, that's amazing. Absolutely but amazing. He, that was his box. But as you say, for those that don't spend a lot of time around horses, you don't know those things, you know. For argument's sake, often you see owners, and when we at the races in the number one box, we stand 
and we do the lead in and you watch the lead in so up close and personal and some of the guys and girls go and stand behind the horse and, and uh, luckily one of us is there and we say excuse me sir or ma'am you must move away quickly don't stand but and you you know you get a kick you don't know or you yeah. stand too close between the wall the horse just leans on you so yeah, you've got I to think, know, you know those also, things also you know the adrenaline so high with everyone yes and, and absolutely now we can yeah. ask Muzi why he's still around lucky he had a body protector on in Scottsville he walked behind the horse he got both back feet in his chest sure. cool. Down. I, I got kicked once who <laughs> takes the air out of you <laughs> yeah. Mark tell me uh, after you've had a, a sip of water it's so hot here today at Summerfeld and that's what I wanted to also say but the noise has settled I was going to alert everybody that there was a lawnmower in the background the noise so it's not poor recording quality or bad speakers it, we are in a working environment there's a kitchen going there's lawnmowers going so if you hear all those noises in the background we apologize um and I just wish, uh, you know, I've been battling with these caller people that are phoning, trying to sell me either medical insurance, death insurance. I mean, I don't know, should I be worried? So why do you answer the phone? Because they phone 37 times a day, so I just push decline, decline, oh, decline. I always get F-Bob. You get F-Bob, eh? Yeah, alles frack me, all wants me, it's okay. I keep getting SMSs that I've uh, got an inheritance. Inheritance, yeah. <laughs> Somebody asked oh, me yeah. on social media. Uh, uh, in fact, Good Naji. It was pa- Patrick Rivland talking of Patrick Rivland. Here's Tony Rivland, and there was he sent me a message that he's got an inheritance. He's got to go online, click here, click there. He's, he's overseas inheritance. He's one got millions. I mean, no. do these people think we fools. Well, they do catch them. They do catch some people, yeah, but uh, they didn't catch us. But nevertheless, let's go back to uh, um, talking about your trip to the UK. Yes, because now, although you guys work hard, is Pete a kind of guy that says your leave is due? You've got to go. Get out. Does he, is he ensure that you take your time off? Yes, he does. He knows everybody's leaves recorded on their pay slips. Everybody knows, you know, how much leave they have due. And um, obviously it was the end of the season. So, you know, the, the big walks out the way. Um, but he did he did give me extra leave okay. when I went over to the UK. So I could really, you know. Was it, a, was it your plan? Did you, you know, you knew you had leave coming. Were you always wanting to plan an overseas holiday? Or were you just... Did it come up surprisingly? Um, I've always wanted to go over and see some of these big race racing festivals. I uh, ideally wanted to go to Royal Ascot, but um, visa applications take really long. It, I think it took about six weeks, sure. if not eight, for mine to come through. So, so that had, had fallen um, aside, and um, the girl I'm seeing is based in the UK. So, you know, she had come over in December, January, and spent about six weeks with me. Uh, so, you know. I'd been trying to get over for a while and spend some time with her. So it, it just happened to, to all come together. End of the season, um, I d- didn't get to go f- to Royal Ascot, but uh, the Ebor Festival was coming up, so it just kind of all worked out. Yeah, well, those British race courses, are, they've got so much history behind them. Eh? It's magnificent. Uh, and it, you only went to the one. Yeah. yeah I, I, I mean, there's I, I so just, many. York. Yeah. yeah, you know, it was uh, tr- trying to schedule everything in, and, you know, they, they're quite far apart. Uh, so I would have loved to do a little bit more of the, the horsey things and, and see a little bit more of the race courses. And the so so you, you went to the Ebor Festival, the international stakes run at York. Yeah. So you've never been to York in your life. Did, no. did you go, had you gone for a drive past the day before the race meeting or was the first time you ever clapped eyes on the day of the no, race meeting? No, it was the day of. So I arrived. Um, what was the first thought that went through your mind as you arrived there? Well, well as you enter, there's a magnificent statue of Frankel right past the entrance. Uh, everything is immaculate. And everybody's dressed to the nines. You know, it's a big festival. Everybody's sure. waiting for, for this, you know, throughout the year. It's some of the biggest names, horses, in, in, you know, competing at this event. So, yeah, I was really taken aback, you know. Like, you, you see it on TV, and when you actually there, it's, it falls apart. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's two, there's two race courses, I, I'm, and I don't know how I'm going to do it because I'm not a great uh, flyer. I'm not a great traveller. I'm petrified of flying. I say I'm petrified. I do it if I have to, but I'm desperate to go to Royal Ascot and I'm desperate to go to Newmarket. If you gave me a choice, you either go to Dubai or Royal Ascot. I'd rather go Royal Ascot and Newmarket, especially Newmarket. There's something about it. Every time I watch it, I just keep saying to the family, "I want to go there. I want to go there." There's but only one place I want to go. To. Where is that? The Birdsville Cup. The Birdsville Cup. Tell us about the that. The Birdsville Cup is in the middle of nowhere in Australia. Okay. The town has got a, a regular population of 40. Jeez. Wow. It's out in the middle of the desert. And then for two days they have the Birdsville Cup Festival. They get about five or 6,000 people there. 
blokes come in and Lear jets and aeroplanes and so it's, it's, a, it's a real jewel and then it's the Birdsville Hotel and the, the big um, the big thing is there you, you drink your beer and you toss it into, onto the floor so by the end of the th- end of the meeting it's just a carpet of, of, of beer cans yeah. and then, and then, and then they all go home and then for the rest of the year there's only 40 people there Sheesh, okay. well, that's an interesting thing we must look that up because um, when I was in Australia in 1981 there was a bloke who he didn't have a float his float broke down or something so he trotted his horse behind his his ute his bucky for 240 k's yes <laughs> and it jetted Jeez, <laughs> so yeah. it must have been fit by so the time it got there <laughs> that sounds like the wild west star Never something star i can't remember his proper name but anyway mark um Dove. no that was a lovely d- that was a lovely uh, uh side mm. step there interesting um, with regards to York, so the facilities, uh, massive, uh, uh, the, the people friendly, food, everything, whatever you want. It's, it's you know, everything top level, top tier. Uh, the, if you look at the parade ring, the grass, you know, again, everybody was dressed to the nines. The punters, service. Punters, lot of oh, punters, yeah, yeah. Lot of, there, lot was of <laughs> there was a fair few punters. I think uh, Bayed was their banker in a lot of their, their plays. <laughs> Now let's talk about Bayed because you met three top quality or well, three champions, top quality. No, there's no words to explain them, but let's start with Bayed. I mean, I can just imagine the excitement and the build up to you seeing this freak of a horse. You know, he's, he's unbeaten, and that was the first time he was running over the, the 10 furlong. So that was really the only question mark. I mean, he's been perfect. No, whether he would stay or not. So yeah. that, that really was the question, you know, is he going to stay or not? And he just traveled so beautifully and I think it was just the last 200 when he really asked him and he, it was immediate and crowd went it, mad it was a it was a top class field and he, he just left them standing El Mishra for a second yeah, it? yeah. Mm. and the crowd was just berserk yeah 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 it was it was something to behold and then nope. when he came into, sorry Andrew no carry on when he came into the winner's enclosure and all that when you saw him there I mean you just must have been awestruck you know they they really went above and beyond they were handing out little flags of him before while he was in the parade ring you know it, well everyone really you know he was the horse that they they went there for um and if you look at him you know maybe on tv he looks a little bigger but you see him in the flesh and he's not like a massive horse he's you know is he's, he's an average sized horse but the athlete. ability sure. is that's what we're lacking in south africa really is that we've had a f- couple of of horses with which people sort of gravitate to, but not like in the old days when you had like politician. I mean, people just come to the race course to watch politician. Mm-hmm. Sea Cottage, Sea Cottage ran, and I think his last race was Gosforth Park. They had about sixty or seventy thousand people there just to watch one horse. Um, I don't know. We don't seem to have a horse with that sort of charisma at the moment anyway what I, I would think, like to see so carry on Mark. yeah I think we've had a, a couple horses you know every year you have one or two of them that really really shine a light on racing and I mean we've had Rainbow Bridge and do it again and I, I do get what you're saying but there is always that one it's something yeah. about a champion you know some these top tier horses that, that you get somehow unites people you know everyone getting behind the the excitement of it all and you know what just wanting to be a part of it what I think we should be doing is Yes, and I, like Mark, I get exactly what you're saying. That sea cottage and politician, and we've have had the Rainbow Bridges, the Captain's Ransom. Yeah, but they're not. They're, they're very good horses. Yeah, they're and not. They're in their own right, but yes. they're not horses where a bloke off the street will say, "Just I want to go and watch." Correct. It. I, that's why we're saying yeah. we understand what you're saying. But what I think what we should do with those horses that are, let's use Summer Pudding as an example. Whenever Summer Pudding's at the races, win or lose afterwards. Parade the horse amongst, get, you know, in the parade ring. Let it walk in the parade ring with its saddle cloth on, etc. In between a race, let the people view it, take photos. Let the horse walk on the in front, yeah. uh, down the straight to the 300 meter mark. Walk around, let the public cheer for it, take photos. Leave the leave the horse in the eye of the public for a bit longer. They win their race in the winners' box. Put up, shoop, they s- uh, switch off to the back. No. I understand they've got to go for specimens, but I'm sure they can wait five or ten no. minutes. Just let that champion be in the public eye and area. I'm sure when Bayed won, 
they did that. I mean, did they, I mean, the horse wasn't whisked away within five seconds. I'm sure it's you know it's a standard thing with these uh, Grade One races that that the horse has a victory canter pass, and you know they come into the parade ring and that. But I, I get what you're saying. But I think you know it's it's purely from a, a well-being point of view. They just want to make sure that you know the horse sure. is, is just run is being pressed to to maximum, and they just want to make sure that you know the animal's okay yeah. because. The bottom line is, you know, their well-being. Yes, no, yeah. sure, sure. No, absolutely. absolutely. No, because I remember when I remember politicians' last race was in the Queen's Plate in Cape Town. Uh, Queen's Plate in those days was run after the Met. Um, and after you won that race, Sid Leeds said there was his end finished, and he paraded in front of the grandstand at Kenilworth. And I mean, it, it was absolutely jam-packed. with people there. Yeah. So they did a parade uh, like a fine. There was a horse in South Africa. Uh, it was at Hollywood Best Gravel, I think. Is it maybe not Rainbow Bridge or somebody had their last parade? Or but the po- irrespective, the point I'm making is Beach that Beauty, I think, was the last maybe one. Beach Beauty, the Beach Beauty, Champions Beauty, yeah. Cup, That's think. lovely. That's yeah. what I'm saying. We need to see a little bit more of that. Let the horse... St- you're 100% right about its well-being and etc. But instead of them being in the winner's area for three minutes, let them be with the public for eight minutes. That's that's just my little, little uh, uh, piece of opinion. But... Bayid, okay. Then that the list didn't end there because then you tell us about your meeting with Dubawi. So I was fortunate enough to to spend the morning at both Jadmon and uh, Godolphin. Sure. So all based in Newmarket. Um, Sorry to interrupt you. I wish I'd known because I have been b- battling. I, I collect caps, jackets, pens, etc. And a friend of mine managed to send me a Godolphin cap, but I'm desperate. I'd pay any money for a sure, for a for a for a, a Godolphin uh, jacket. I, I don't. They didn't really have like a gift shop or anything. I believe like, so. I, think I it's, believe so. I think they it's more of you know like a client or, or a trainer. I'll send them a horse. <laughs> 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 but anyway, carry on. So you went to, to Judvant and. Uh, yeah, so um, I, I spent about three days in Newmarket. Okay. Um, oh, when you see a beautiful Newmarket. That yeah, must have been stunning. It's a, it's a really beautiful place. You, you think it's a little town and, you know, where could they possibly have horses and just behind, like, some of the streets and that there's, there's yards and that you go up onto the heat. It's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, I would very much like to live there. <laughs> Can you get the hint out there if you're watching? <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, so so Jadmont were gracious enough to allow me to to come in for a visit on the Thursday, the day after the, um, the international stakes. How did you organize that? Did, you, did somebody? Well, put I, uh, with, with Jadmont, I'd email them okay. and asked. You know, I said that you know this is I want to come and see Frankel if it's possible. Can I arrange a viewing? And they were, they were very accommodating. With Dalamol start uh, the Godolphin operation. Um, Eric Sands actually uh, had known someone who works for Godolphin and put me in contact with them. So again, you know, back and forth emails and calls, and you know, is it possible? Can so I you, come? So you over? organized it. Right? You, so you. Uh, it was a lot of people here who had helped. Me. Okay. okay. Uh, but you did the emailing and the contacting yeah, and yeah, the, okay. sure. But but they they, they very much did. Um, set the whole thing up. Andrew, how's that on a, on a trip to see Dubawi, Frankel and Bayed? <laughs> yeah, well, it's just the right time. It's yeah. like somebody coming to Quasi in Natal and seeing Andrew Harrison, Warren and Fern and Tawanda Talavinga. Or not quite. They should be so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Dubawi, Frankel and Bayed. So that was, sure, uh, you must have just felt uh, next to those champions, those, uh, you must have just felt humbled. Unreal, you know. You watch all their races, and I think I must have watched his guineas run well over a hundred times. I don't think I've ever seen a performance like that. And if there was one thing that I wanted to do, you know, in this life, or like a little dream, was to to see him in the flesh. And yeah, I was having hot flutters before <laughs> they walked him out the box. Yeah. Sure. we've got a we've got some tail hairs of Franco. In the office. Yes, we have indeed. Who gave us that? I can't remember who gave us that souvenir. Yeah, somebody no, was it not uh, Mr. Bill Lambert after his trip overseas? No, possibly. I don't know. He always comes remember. and gives you some gifts from his. Uh, no, we can we can always overseas. flog that. <laughs> <laughs> well, he just seems to be getting better and better. He's produced an arc winner. The arc winner, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. She's had that Philly winner. That was a wonderful race. The Training, racing yards, you, you, you went to Mark Johnson's yard and to William Haggis's yard. I mean, how that too must have been an experience all on its own. The, uh, yeah, it, I was fortunate enough for, f- with Mark Johnson's operation, one of the vets here, Graham Wallace, is a, is a good friend of mine and 
you know, I told him, you know, I'm going over to the UK for a bit of a break. And he'd arranged this off his own accord. You know, he said, um, I'm good mates with Charlie. You know, that's the one place you want to go and see. You know, if you go, you're going to obviously going to go to Newmarket. But if there's somewhere else that you need to see, it's his operation. And it's it's a massive property. I think he's got something like 280 horses. Sure. He's got his own tracks. I think it might be three little farms in a town that are all connected. Um, they've got their own gallops and things like that. Mm-hmm. It's, he's, I think, just past the 5,000 mark, uh, sure. winner mark as a trainer. No, he's the winning most, is it an Americanism? The winning most trainer in, Eng- in England. No. Yeah, I think Daniel Musket had written his... Uh, I'm glad you mentioned Daniel Musket because Tawanda spoke about Daniel Musket. Yeah, there was, he's just won a big race or he's just won something. Well, at, at the Ebo Festival on the Wednesday, uh, he had won the grade two prior to, to Baid's race. So I was fortunate enough to get a little recording of him. You know, we had a little chat and, you know, so so good to be there and support him. You know, did you only a have a little race. chat? Did you not take you for dinner? I mean, that's Peter's son. No, we... I was uh, restrained with my scheduling, so it was okay. that week just to try and fit everything in. It was so difficult. Yeah. And so and that and, and yeah, I can't blame you because you want to get as much done as possible. I mean, when we went yeah. on holiday to Cape Town too, you, you have literally every hour occupied and you want to get as much done as possible. No, but he, he was very gracious. He had, he had organized tickets for me. Uh, he okay. had said, you know, if you come in a new market, drop me a line. Uh, he had invited me to come racing with him, uh, the one day. And it's just that, you know, I had already schedule things and they were conflicting so Peter must tickets, so tickets to get into the new the UK race courses are yeah, not cheap not cheap and what, and not quite pricey yeah. 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 marks at 40, 40 quid something like that yeah just to get in okay. times 20 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my account was uh, running flat very quick your account was looking a little under pressure but okay so Daniel so you met him and uh, yeah he's doing so well he's sponsored by Hollywood and, and yeah he's just doing fantastic yeah, he's just well. going from strength to strength and it's so good to see Mark Johnson and William Haggis to talk to. I mean, you know, easy to talk to. Are they? Or did you feel uncomfortable around them, or, or did you feel that you were at ease and easy to, to co- strike a conversation with these? Unfortunately, gentlemen? Mark was away at sales at the time, so I dealt. Um, I was taken around the the property by his team, and everyone really went above and beyond to, to show me everything, to take me around. You know, I I know what it's like. It's a busy morning. You've got a lot to do. With, I think I've got a lot to do with the amount of horses we have. They've got. 280 or something like that so for them just to accommodate me uh, take me around give me their time they were very gracious and it it was very humbling you know that they, they really yeah. put a lot of effort into it my name was even on their worksheets for the morning mark naidu coming in to shadow this morning sure. okay. i would actually like to go to an operation like that just to see how they run it must be like a, a military operation eh? yeah so they've got i think maybe three or four assistant trainers if i'm not mistaken yeah. And you know they've got a lot of people under them, but yeah, but you know, you, even the admin, because you got nominations every day as well. Yeah. Can you do us a favour? What? Get hold of a sponsor, man. Get a sponsor to take a pick six and win us a pick six or do something. Get us some cash in the tin tank and let's go. I don't know. We take can, our wives; they'll be so happy. We can, <laughs> we can tap Gold Circle. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> well, that's a bit hopeful. Yeah. Well, if you need a guide, I've already been there. So. <laughs> Now, Daryl Daniels. Let's talk about Daryl Daniels, who is a colleague of yours, and and a good friend, and a good friend, a absolutely a colleague. And it gave me such a that race meeting that you had the other day. Not that there are race meetings where you don't do well. It's not. It's not. It's not possible for every trainer to do well at every race meeting. The horses have bad days. But on that particular meeting, we most of the two, well, you and Daryl were at the races with Peter and and Roz. And I think it was three winners, was it? Two or three yeah, winners? Yeah, three, three winners, winners in a two row. seconds, two thirds. Yeah, 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 it was a fabulous day. And we were doing interviews differently. And I got hold of you and Daryl. And it was so nice to talk to you guys and feel the joy and the smiles on your faces. And to be part of the happy team. Because as you say, a lot of hard work goes in behind the scenes. Yeah. And days like that are so rewarding. You know, it's 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 pleasurable and exciting enough having one winner on any day. But to have three three in a row, you know, it's you can't put it into words. It doesn't happen every day. You know, it's 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 a difficult feat to accomplish for for anybody. But you know, it was fortunate enough that all of us were there together, and you know, it, it really was a magnificent day. Daryl, let's talk about him as a colleague. 
Um, does he only ride work or, or does he also no, no. do work he, in the stable? He does stable? some stuff in the yard. He, he, he's there in the mornings. He helps with the supplements and, and doing some treatments. Uh, he's there when they're trotting up. So he's very much n- a part of the, the main core team. Okay, he's not okay. just a rider. Not just no, I saw somewhere that he's looking to get his jockey license back. Yes, yeah, that's what's so, so interesting to read in the Sporting Post, I think it was, yeah. I, I don't think he has too much longer. I think it's just a little bit of formalities and, and things like that. But, um, you know, hopefully everything goes according to plan and we'll see him. He he won't be leading them in, he'll be riding them in. <laughs> yeah, no, but he can he, ride. He has ridden a winner for me, what are you seeing? In the old days, I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't had too many champions. In fact, not one. I don't know. Saratoga oh, Dancer was quite good. Me and, D- me and Daryl go back to his apprentice uh, days. He's ridden me a winner. He, uh, with, uh, Paul Donation is the trainer. How long ago is that? No. But uh, Daryl's a, a solid rider, fabulous rider. He's very good. And, very and, strong. And, he, you know, obviously everybody sometimes goes off, you know, things happen in life, but it's just wonderful that he's grabbed hold of things with opportunities that he's been given by Peter and others. And he's, he's, he's so nice to see him at the track and he's bounced back in such a positive way. And full credit to him, you know, he's a very hard worker. He's yes. put in the effort, you know, he's, he's really, he's worked very hard for, sure. for where he is. And, Calvin you know, and wish Cal- him all the success. Absolutely. And, you know, we were talking about Calvin and Mobo on the podcast the other day. And how he told us his story and you know he went a little off the rails or off the beaten track and he's back and he's working hard and it's exactly what mark says work hard is what you've got to do to pull yourself back up yeah it's sometimes it takes a bit of a lot of mental strength yeah and uh, daryl daniels we wish you all the very best you're absolutely not only a good friend uh, a colleague and uh, a jockey of the highest quality you know, he, so used to, he used to ride for watkinson and Ash Burton yes, and all yes. There was a horse, a very good horse, you said, the one that features. What was Studio it? Star. Studio Star. What was the I told, I told Mark, I think he won the Poinsettia Stakes, yeah. but I, think I told Mark the story. It's probably better not to go on air with it. But no, well, let Daryl tell it. Yeah, Daryl will tell it. Yeah, Daryl tell it. He can tell the story about it. What was it called? St- uh, Studio Star. Studio Star. For, for your okay. Funder Fendel owned it. But Daryl, lo- lovely to see you at the track and at the stables and... Uh, Hopefully, we'll be interviewing you in the winner's enclosure soon. Okay, so that's there. Because that was a lovely article that was written that he's hoping. And his weight, he's obviously seems to be getting on track with all I that. I don't think he's ever had a problem with no his weight. Well, yeah. I think he's no problem. Right. He's a okay. natural lightweight. He'd be able to elaborate a bit more. Okay. Yeah, no good. But you say Ashford and Boyer. Oh, no, yeah, we've, we've run into a few blokes in the end. Yeah, okay. Well. I think uh, that's it for Mark's side. Uh, he's filled us in on your wonderful, wonderful trip. I mean, it sounds like we probably when you came back, it was so busy you needed a holiday from your holiday because you had so many things to do and so many exciting yeah, things. A, we, we just try to maximize the time and, and, yeah. and make sure we do something every day uh, and experience the British culture and, and try and get in as much um, stuff, horse-related activities, and I wish I had a bit more time, you know, to to go around and do a bit more. But mm. but I'm very gracious and uh, thankful that I did have the opportunity. And all the people who did help me, um, you know, set this whole thing up. Everybody, there's so many people involved. Um, Michael Roberts, he spoke to William Haggis on my behalf. Eric Sands with Godolphin, Graham Wallace. Um, the boss, obviously, giving me the time off, and my missus across there for for you know being there for me the whole time you certainly uh yeah have, have have done well and, and what a great holiday and thank you for sharing that with us because we really we, daryl was supposed to be on the podcast with us but just to our right there out of the track he's still busy and uh, not that mark's not busy but uh, both couldn't come to the podcast one had to come and entertain us on the podcast and the other gentleman had to continue with the work with well, you can only ride one one rider at a time you yeah, yeah, both get on uh, we'll get Daryl on soon, and it was just nice to have uh, Mark here. And Mark, before we close up with you, we did do the Understarters Orders show with you this morning, but for those that may not watch the Understarters Orders show, yeah. just it's not a tipping show, this uh, podcast, it's just a general discussion, but you've got the three runners for Sunday, is that right? Yes, that's correct. We've got Miraculous Man. It's his second run. He had a very pleasing debut. Yes. He is, unfortunately, drawn in the deep, so we're hoping you know he settles in the run and he can he can run into the money. Your second runner? Uh, we've got Sashay Away yes. and Wishful Girl Learn in the same race. Right. So Sashay Away, um, her last two runs, she's, she's just failed narrowly. We've got the Blinkers, blinkers on her. Blinkers, I saw that. Yeah. Um, reverse back to the, the Grass 1200, Richard Ferry up, and we, she, she'll, she'll be very competitive. Uh, Wishful Girl Learn, it is a comeback run for her. Um, she's, it's a 112-day break. Um, she, she 
for your life. Has so shown that she, she can. She, she's better on the poly for sure. You know, all her wins have come there. But she has shown that she can run well fresh, and you know, we'll be looking for her to run into the money. Thank you to you and your whole team, and and so well, I want to ask you. Yeah, ask, ask, ask before we ask. Ask ask it's running its final race on on Saturday. Yeah. Can he beat the Derby winner? We're holding fingers for him. Keep that perfect record intact. Yeah, Chris, that's a hell of a race, that. Eh? Can you uh, just refresh my memory? Uh, I can't remember. It's got a funny name. Uh, the Derby winner Adia, last year. If, I'm, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. From the Derby last year. Come I think on, it's his uh, second uh, run back. This is from Bayed we're talking about. Yeah, no, Bayed's taking on the Derby winner. So mm. it should, he's yeah. not going to have it easy, I don't think. Yeah, that's going to be exciting. Charlie Appleby is a bit of a bit of a genius, sir. And they're going to be go- they're going to be going out of their way to to ensure the record stays intact. Yeah. Um, oh, I think he's going to win it. Too. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And then uh, talking about Charlie Appleby, who's your just out of by and by, who's your favourite international rider? Favourite international rider, yeah. uh, Lyle Hewitson. <laughs> <laughs> well answered. Well answered. Let me ans- ask you the question again. Who is your favourite international rider, not of South African? Uh Christoph Sumilon. I thought that was brilliant the way he pushed that like, off. <laughs> <laughs> Who is your favourite international rider? Oh, Frankie. Rider? Frankie. Okay, somebody ask me. Frankie and, and Ryan Moore. I mean, it's, it's hard to pick between Who's them, your but they're favorite? both brilliant. Th- thank you. I mean, you should. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm throwing the ball at you. Nobody's throwing the ball at me. I also like to answer the question, you know. But you're saying Frankie and Ryan Moore, the two of them. I have never watched. I've never ridden a, uh, ridden a horse. And we're talking international, eh? So I don't want any of our South African riders to get jumpy or to get upset. I'm talking international. I have never seen a man able to pull a horse out the trouble ever in my life like William Buick. For me, he's my man overseas. Uh, 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 I've, uh, yes, right. We're talking about who are our personal favorites. Christoph Simeon, Ryan Moore, and, and Frankie de Tori. William Buick. I mean, I... Yeah, all those riders are world class. Mm-hmm. They have got, but William. Yeah, after the yeah. other day, I was watching a race. and said, "If this runs in the first five, I'll eat it." And I've eaten uh, my words before. <laughs> I tell you the one, the, one, the one jock that I, I saw when he rode here in the internet. We, we used to have international races. Was was Marewa Joey? Oh yeah, uh, Joe. Yeah, he, he yeah. rode. He rode here. He came. For, he was riding in Singapore at the time. They said, "You know, is he good enough to come and ride in this thing?" He was. It was an unknown in those days. Yeah. But he had horses here that had absolutely no form. And he was getting them up to run second, third. Yeah. I mean, it no, was, he was just different division. They yeah. don't call him magic for nothing. No, no, Jeez, he's good. Eh? But uh, that, uh, yeah, that is... Uh, also, so we still got to do that podcast with the uh, sticks. We need to get... Yeah. Try and get somebody from the Stamps board, the gentleman that makes the sticks, a jockey. We want to talk about the sticks because uh, that's a must. Before we wrap up... Um, any other exciting news just at the top of our heads that we can think of that needs to be uh, disseminated to the public? No, I see you. The horses that Philly's in fall. We had a fall. Yes, a s- uh, summer pudding. Summer pudding. Summer pudding's in fall, yes. To Rafif. Correct, to Rafif. So that's going to be fantastic. I have visited a few st- uh, stud farms over the past couple of days and there are foals popping up everywhere. And hats off to the breeders and the breeding industry countrywide because it's not easy. And uh, they're just positive and working hard and, and delivering. Yeah, I see special. Bella Bella also had a cold fall, a second cold fall. They call it It's a Bit. It's a Bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's a half as good as It's a Bit, is it? <laughs> <All right. laughs> and then there's a soccer bet that we need to talk about. Um, there's, of course, the soccer six and the soccer ten and uh, all other various soccer bets. So please make sure you go on and uh, get your soccer bets on. And uh, the soccer bets are. Score six and score ten. Lots of betting action for you. So go on to Tab Gold. Go on to www.tabgold.co.za, and uh, there's also another bet that's going to be released by Gold Circle in the next couple of weeks. So we'll won't tell you anything about that now. But score ten and score six. Soccer ten, soccer six. Get those bets on as well as all your horse racing and, and sporting bets. But I think gentlemen. Oh, and Mo Salah scored three yesterday. Who did? Mo Salah. Who's that? He's, he plays goalkeeper for. For Marisburg I, United. I don't watch soccer. Are you in my campaign? You don't know. Uh, you didn't know he was I talking don't follow about. soccer, yeah, I don't but follow I know he's, he's one of the. I top scored three, three for Liverpool. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the Liverpool. Champions League. Are Liverpool any good? No, they're not as good as they oh, were last year. I think you're going to start trouble here with that. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I wouldn't know. I'm saying it innocently. Uh, Manchester City or Manchester United aren't they better? 
Uh, City a different division at the okay. moment. Uh, I don't know. Mark and I are not soccer fans. We don't know what Andrew's talking about, but uh, all the very best to those that love soccer. Everyone has different interests. Okay, that's a wrap from us. Thanks, Andrew. Mark, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks mm. for filling us in on your holiday. It was most informative. It is only a pleasure. Um, and please send Daryl our very best and, and tell him we look forward to seeing him in action and we're holding thumbs. And if there's anything we can do for any of you guys, just let us know. Wonderful. Cheers. Lovely. Thank, thank you very you. much. That's Mark Thanks, Mark. And, uh, Andrew and uh, the whole team behind the scenes. Punt well and uh, most importantly, more than anything, keep yourselves and your family and your loved ones safe. From Warren Inferno, Andrew Harrison, Mark Naidu and the whole team. We'll see you, as always, in the number one box. Thank you for watching this week's episode of In the Box Seat Podcast right until the very end. We hope that you enjoyed it because we certainly did. If you missed last week's podcast, In the Box Seat Podcast with Andrew and myself, please go and watch it here. And uh, last week's uh, episode will be right there for you to go and enjoy and watch as uh, we know you will certainly enjoy in the Box Seat podcast from last week.